Amen. Please be seated. So a happy beginning of Lent to you all. This morning, as we enter this time of change, which the number 40 means to change, 40 in our lives, uh, 40 days out of Noah in the ark, 40 years, the uh, Israelites wandering around the desert, and Jesus in the wilderness for 40 days. The number signifies change. And one of the things I think we all need to change is a, an awareness of God in certain places and certain times. And I'd like to talk about just a little bit the Irish have a, a, a term for it called thin places, where there are certain places you will encounter in your life where you get a spiritual sense that the veil between that world and this world is thinner. And I know I've experienced that in some of the most unlikely places. I'm sure some of you find it on the golf course Fair enough. Uh, we call those blue domers in my field. People who say, oh, I don't need to go into church. I can just look at that big blue dome of heaven and, and I'm one with God. That's better than church, you know, four. <laughs> but the blue domers, they're right. But I know from my own experience, uh, I remember once in my, in my mid-20s, we, back in those ancient old days, we were required to do a one-week silent retreat before each ordination, before you were a deacon, before you were a priest. And I was so resentful of mine. We were all studying in Italy, and it was spring break, and all of my friends, about six of them, planned a trip down to Sicily. And I had never been to Sicily, and I so wanted to go on vacation with my friends. But my uh, father's superior said, no, you have to do your silent retreat for the week before your ordination. I was so resentful that whole week. But I, and even here, I was sent to the Trappist Monastery of Tre Fontaine. Now, you would think that would be a thin place. Historically, it's believed that is the site where St. Paul had his head chopped off. And <laughs> gotta leave it to the Italians. Each place his head hit the ground, traditionally, a fountain came up, a well. And when I was there, walking around, bored out of my mind for a week, talking to no one, I realized these three fountains are so far apart from each other. What kind of rubber head did St. Paul have that <laughs> this bounced all over? That wasn't, though, the thin place, nor was that monastery. Wandering around, I found this strange little chapel, which was just an A-frame. And it was, you, you went in, there were no pews, there were no stained glass windows, just this A-frame on a wooden floor, and you think it's bad not having heat in here. Imagine if you, yeah, we took all the pews away from you, and you just had to sit Indian style on the floor. It was, though, an amazing thing. I have such a reverence for that place. I went back to it several times because it was one of those thin places to me. There were people in, on a Tuesday afternoon just sitting on the floor in total silence, meditating. And I was in awe of it. I've come to find these thin places, again, not the Vatican, not the places you would expect. I believe this is one of them. And as you know, I'm a bit jealous at protecting the silence in here, of protecting the atmosphere, that this isn't a marketplace. This is a thin place. This is where we are encountering God. And I will do everything to ensure we keep this as a thin place. I try and open the doors every day so that there are people who just like to come in here and be, not talk, just sit and, in, and absorb God. I've also found, though, that there are thin times. I don't think there's an Irish word for this one, but there are thin times. 
For me, Holy Week, every single time is one of them. Everything happens to me during that week. My father died, my brother was sick, good or bad, but just that veil between that world and this world goes a bit thinner. The Jews are having Passover, we're having Holy Week, and my family have come to expect, oh no, it's Holy Week, what's going to happen? It's all based on the lunar cycle, the full moon. It could be a, a million example reasons, but Holy Week is a thin time, an event. And I think it's one of those where it's take your shoes off, you're treading on holy ground in a holy place at a holy time. So with that concept in your mind, I would ask you to keep it when you hear these readings this morning. So the first thing to say is in the gospel, which is our highest. We're going to hear about Jesus being baptized, a thin event, a thin time where the veil is parted and he hears this voice of God, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. That's a thin time if you ever get one, your baptism and hearing the heavens open up. The second half of it, though, is finding out Jesus might have been a golfer because he his thin place is he's always going off into the woods. When he is depleted, when he's tired, he gets up earlier and goes out because that's where he will be recharged, out in the wilderness. And it's a thin time for him, too. He is tempted by Satan. I tried to figure out yesterday, thinking about what would it be like for God to be tempted? Don't you automatically know you're not going to give in, that it's not a real temptation? Like the alcoholic who's sitting there staring at that vodka bottle, just on a razor's edge, just one little sip I could, just, but you know it's a wedge and you would, the temptation would overtake you, the camel's nose would be under the tent flap. What would it be like for God to be really tempted? But this is a thin place for him and a thin time for him to be in that vulnerable position. And of course, the devil, whatever that is, is there trying to taunt him into making the bad choice. And then the, the second reading is also playing with an in-between, because the first reading is about Noah and the ark. Let me say, first of all, we don't take that story literally, but it expresses something of an event, a thin event in history. There must have been a flood of some sort. I don't believe there were two of every animal. They would have eaten each other, all the animals. But logic aside, it does tell a story about a thin time for us in our history when God and humanity were working something out. And we're going to hear a beautiful thing in there, which you might miss, that God, after the flood, God invents rainbows. And all pride flags aside, I, I do rejoice at this, but he invents these rainbows not just to remind us of the contract he's making with us, that I'll never flood you out again or reboot you, but you'll hear in this, he sets this bow of color in the sky to remind him of the promise he's made. That's an amazing insight. But it means even for God, there is a thin place, a thin time when we see that rainbow. And then the uh, letter of St. Peter is trying to bridge those two things together, that Noah and the flood is a prefigurement of our baptism. And he's recalling us to that thin time when we were adopted as children of God. We might have been babies and not be able to remember it, but it was a thin time in a thin place and a thin event where God was especially closer. I think there's a lot going on in these, but I would ask you not just listening for those themes in these readings, but absorbing and taking it in that this is a thin place, and right now is a thin time as we 
get the privilege of approaching the throne of grace and saying thank you and giving whatever it is we have taken on for Lent, making that a love gift that we offer. The Jews have yarmulkes on their heads to constantly remind them of God. We have our things that we do too that remind us to think about God. And during the season of Lent, we take on certain things like I'll give up sugar in my coffee or chocolate, what seems trivial, but it isn't if it is an occasion of a thin time where it is a constant <coughs> reminder to us that I am offering this thing I love to you because I love you and I want to share it with you. So I will deprive myself so that you can have that joy. The only reason we do that is out of love for God and to kind of be a yarmulke to us. Oh yeah, I've got to think about God. I want some chocolate, God. <laughs> Listen to these, let this be a thin place, let this be a thin time, and let's get in the zone during this 40, 40 days of Lent so that when we get to Easter, we are fully in that place where the veil is parted and heaven and earth touch each other. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, as for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I established my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord, therefore he teaches the news. 
He guides the humble in doing right and teaches his way to the lowly. All the plans of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Christ suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. note, please. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We Christ, the only Son of God, he 
Sisters and brothers, let us now draw together some of our prayers and intercessions for the church and for the world. In the beauty of our worship, in the silence of our hearts, in our committee meetings, as we struggle to live together in peace, as we are tempted by inertia and complacency, when we forget whose we are. When many suffer while we eat well and sleep peacefully, when many beg to be noticed while we seek solitude, when many long for shelter from the storm. Walk with us as we welcome little ones into the world. Walk with us as we care for Karina, Marie, Tammy, Terry, Enzo, Joe, Joyce, Emma Jean, Linda, Chuck, Kevin, Rusty, Laura, Lauren, Joni, Rachel, Laurie, Carol, Jess, and others. And all those who ache. Walk with us as we walk with those who have died remembering especially Jay, John, Peter, Jay, Mark, Dick, Sally, Joni, Bob, John, Joanne, Hans, Buck, Wally, Ed, Anne, Mary, Marilyn, George, Pete, Norm, Ace, Scooter, and John, and all those returning to you. For what else shall we pray? Our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, 
and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good morning and God's peace to all of you. God's peace yes, to you as Brooke. well. Yes, good, good morning, everybody. Yes, good morning, Brooke. Good morning, Brooke and uh, Piggy and Bob. Hi, Tim. Hi, Kim. I saw that the booksellers along the Seine are getting a reprieve for the Olympics. Well, that's a good news. Mm -hmm. good. Didn't read the detail. I'm sitting here by a window that looks directly out on, the, on Notre Dame. Oh, ah. man, it's quite yeah. wonderful. <laughs> how is Peggy? Peggy, how are you? How are you, Mom? Uh, at the moment, so so. You're doing all right. To you, Lord, I live my peace to everyone. My trust in you.
brings a harvest out of sorrow and leads the exile's soul. In Christ your Son, enemies are reconciled, debts forgiven and strangers made welcome. Your Spirit frees us to live as sons and daughters in our Father's house. We who by Christ's power follow the way of the cross, sharing the joy of his obedience, now offer you our prayers with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending glory. loving Father, for Christ, in whom the world is reconciled. Lifted on the cross, his suffering and forgiveness spanned the gulf our sins had made. Through that dark struggle, death was swallowed up in victory, that life and light might reign. Before he was given up to suffering and death, recalling the night of Israel's release, the night in which the sons of Egypt died, your chosen one, himself the firstborn, freely offered his life. At supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. It is broken for you. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. He offered you thanks, and he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all, that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single holy living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon this bread and this wine, that overshadowed by your Spirit's life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us, who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body, to live and work to your praise and glory. 
May we grow together in unity and love until at last in your new creation we enter into our heritage in the company of the Virgin Mary, the apostles and prophets, and of all our brothers and sisters living and departed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. And now, as Christ our Savior himself hath taught us, so we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray together. O God of our ancestors, God of, God of our people, before whose face the human generations pass away, we thank you that in you we are kept safe forever, and that the broken fragments of our history are gathered up in the redeeming act of your dear Son, remembered in this holy sacrament of bread and wine. Help us to walk daily in the communion of saints, declaring our faith in the forgiveness of sins and the resurrection of the body. Now send us out in the power of your Holy Spirit to live and work for your praise and glory. Amen. Would you please be seated for the announcements? We don't seem to have Sunday school. <laughs> we will. Maybe they'll come in later. Uh, I have to uh, do a mea culpa here at the, we confess during um, Lent, I totally forgot to put the blessing of the new vestry uh, in here. We can either make it up uh, or we can do it again next week with the uh, proper text. If, how many vestry do we have here today? Oh, come on up. Let's do, let's make something up. <laughs> I apologize. They were, Every seasonal shift, we have so many changes to the bulletin. Yeah, we'll fake it till we make it. That's, this is the way we're going to work. First of all, thank you for your willingness to serve the parish in this way. We have a year ahead of us with a lot of big decisions, and I am very confident that uh, with all of you at the table, we're going to be just fine. So I can't remember what all the questions are, but do you promise to do everything in your effort to support St. Michael and all angels? If so, say we will. Amen. Do you promise to uh, ask God constantly for help and intercession and wisdom in all our decisions? Amen. Then I commission you as members of the vestry of St. Michael and all angels We'll find out who the wardens are going to be awarded and will be uh, after we meet. But the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I have to say you have very good taste in the people you picked to be on the vestry. Well done. Uh, you also, I am really impressed. Uh, You've taken all this kind of Gregorian chant and run with it. I bet it's been a while since you've chanted the creed. Uh, but to, to say um, that was the way we did it for 1,500 years until, I don't know why, the 1960s, we decided to read it like a phone book. Um, but I'm hopeful that it will, one, make you familiar with our ancient tradition, that that's pretty much the way we always did it. And, and I find the advantage is in singing it like that, it forces us to hear it slightly differently than uh, just 
quite often, good Episcopalians, we, we're so afraid of our memory slipping that we kind of race. Our Father who art in heaven, hell be thy name, thy kingdom, for fear of forgetting. And this has a way of kind of more contemplative, slowing us down and getting us to think about each of these phrases. So on it, I know it's a change, and you'll get it by Easter, by then, and then we'll change it on you. <laughs> So, uh, thank you for that. Um, the Lenten suppers start uh, this Wednesday. You're stuck with me uh, as the speaker. I'm going to be doing my version, at least, of church history. I used to teach it at General Seminary. I've taught it in preschool. I've taught it in high school. All of them are the same. It's, uh, this is our history, and every historian has their particular thing threads that they draw out, so I'm sure I will uh, give you a very strange uh, drive-through of Anglican history, but I hope you'll find it interesting. That's this Wednesday night, and sticking with the uh, kind of contemplative monastic style, you'll see in the hall we're set up uh, kind of like a refectory where you'll eat uh, dinner, soup and supper in silence while uh, a reading of the Desert Fathers goes on. If you've never read the Desert Fathers, they are great fun. Uh, some of the weirdest stuff, and it's from like the year 300, um, flames bursting out of their fingers and all sorts of things. So I hope you'll enjoy that. And then the uh, talk and will end with Compline, which is, if you've never been to Compline, it is uh, one of the prettiest offices, prayer times we have. It's the end of the day. So I hope you'll join us. Not I, Usually everybody joins for the first Wednesday. I hope you'll join us for the second and third and fifth as well. Uh, are there any other announcements? Uh, Liturgy Commission is meeting today, I believe, uh, in the um, conference room. So if you have anything to do with liturgy, please come along, or if you're interested, come along. Are there any other announcements before I get to the birthdays and anniversaries? Cool. Uh, birthdays and anniversaries? Yes, Mary's coming. Got one? Mm -hmm. Oh, and Vincent. <laughs> Shall the mountain come to Muhammad here? <laughs> your surgery is soon, isn't it? It's on your birthday. On your birthday? Happy birthday. Wow. <laughs> it's kind of like Valentine's on Ash Wednesday, isn't it? <laughs> May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. And anticipating this, I brought the holy oils. If I can have your palms. Can you hold all that for me too? Sure, yeah. As long as you're there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. May the Lord, in his love and mercy, grant you healing, strength, and a speedy recovery. And I anoint thee with this holy oil in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I give you the prayer of St. Julian of Norwich, and, and make it your mantra this week. All shall be well, all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Be well. Thank you, Vanna White. <laughs> Would you please stand? Christ crucified draw you to himself to find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you all and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Amen.
let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. It's quiet without a post loop this morning. It's a little, the whole thing has been quiet. It's a little bit of an awkward silence, but we're so glad that you're here with us. Um, how is everybody? Good. Good. Is is Norris still on? I just saw a He's, message from his Norris. Picture is. He's here. Yeah, Norris, you just unmuted yourself. I, I'm here. Hi, Norris. I just saw your thing about about uh doing a weekly Sunday yeah. fun with Chat GPT. I'll I'll publish another one like right now. Oh, that'll be nice. I'll put, it, I'll, I'll put it up in a little uh, section for it. We can be up to date. Okay. Thank you, Norris. Thank you both. That's awesome. Um, think what else? Um, I will say there aren't as so much of the dinner will be quiet. There aren't plans to live stream the Wednesday night uh supper presentation. Um, but um, you're more than welcome to come if you're curious and um. That will develop, I'm sure, as things go forward. We may figure out some way to make it virtual, but not for this week. Uh, we just didn't make space for that in our well, mind. If we're not going to stream it, can stream it? Can we at least record it? Is that possible? I will look into that. For the first time in almost five years, I will not be present for Lenten suppers. My job keeps me away. Um, so it's very strange for me, to be honest, because um, I'm very used to being there. And um, so I will look into that, but um, those that will have to be through other hands because I- We can persuade Kim or- uh, Yes. Call. Yeah, I will look into that prior to, uh, prior to Wednesday and I will let certainly you know. I have the- um... I have the recordings of Father Michael's presentation. Yes, those do exist. And it would be nice to have, because those ones exist, it would be nice to have yeah, Shane as well. They'll be somewhat different, and that'll be worthwhile. Yeah, that would be nice to have. Um, but again, I, uh, I, I can't. I understand. I understand. You're responsible for that. Um, you haven't learned to be in so, place. No, most that I, I can. I can manage it. Um, I can manage it when we're on campus. But when when stuff uh, stuff yeah, calls me yeah. away, I can't manage. It. Um, so, but um, Tuesday morning continues to be live streamed. Um, Friday night for Ukraine continues to be uh, mm -hmm. at six o'clock. Yeah. Uh, then he. No, that's it. Um, so if anyone has any, does anyone have any questions? All right. Well, it was so good to be with you all. Thank you for being here. Um, a holy lunch to all of you. Um, and we will see you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks, bro.